And welcome back. Now, the South African Human Rights Commission has refuted allegations that it is biased. Acting legal head Abuang Jones has said that they would use Springbok player Eben Etzebeth to set an example of the consequences of hate speech. Now, the Freedom Front Plus says that the Human Rights Commission has already found the Springbok lock guilty of assault and hate speech without proper court proceedings. Etzebeth is accused of assaulting two men in an alleged racist incident at the Langabarn uh, Yacht Club in the Western Cape, and this incident allegedly took place in August this year. Now, the four complainants in the matter have asked for financial compensation totaling more than a million rand. So, let's discuss this matter further with the Human Rights Commission's acting legal head, Buang Jones, and uh, at this stage, unfortunately, unable to establish contact with Freedom Front Plus leader Dr. Peter Grunewald, but we'll keep trying, and uh, I'll do my best uh, to put forward what the Freedom Front Plus alleges at this stage, but hopefully we will be able to get in touch with Dr. Peter Grunewald. But Mr. Jones, thanks so much for your time this morning. Thank you for having me. So let's start here. Um, the Yeben Itzabeth case. Now, firstly, this incident is alleged to have taken place in August, and it only seems to be, you know, taking um, a turn for things to happen quite fast right now in October. So when did you become aware of this as the Human Rights Commission? Well, we became aware of the incident um, on, on, the same, on the very same Sunday when this incident happened. The complainants in the matter um, contacted our commissioner in the Western Cape office and we had an initial co um, consultation with uh, some of the complainants in the matter and after um, uh, the discussion with the complainants, we also held uh, discussions with Mr. Yetzabeth because he was in Jobek on the 26th of August. And initially, we had said that we would conduct a formal investigation. But after obtaining more statements, we then changed our position. And we felt that this matter should go to the Equality Court, given the seriousness um, of the allegations and the statements uh, uh, from witness which corroborate the uh, claims by the victims. So in your discussion, your interaction with Mr. Itzabeth himself, what did he tell you? Well, he, he denies all allegations. He denies all allegations. And I was in the West Coast uh, over the last three days to collate and uh, collect the necessary evidence. We've been to the Yacht Club, we've spoken to victims. We also had a, a community engagement on this issue. And more and more people are coming forward, including um, white South Africans who have previously uh, lodged complaints against the Yetzebeths. So uh, just for the benefit of uh, some of our viewers who may not uh, quite be au okay fait with uh, the facts or, um, you know, the allegations in this particular case, because I do understand that there is video evidence as well that you have viewed. But if you could just give us a brief background of what allegedly took place at uh, the uh, Langaban Yacht Club on the 25th of August. Well, this matter revolves around what transpired outside Divaterhat uh, uh, on, on the morning of the 25th of August. Uh, there was an altercation outside the, this pub, and it is alleged that Mr. Yezebeth uh, used the racial slur H word, which falls within the same category as the K word. And well, our case revolves around the usage of this uh, uh, hateful comment, which uh, is, is a mode of expression used to demean and dehumanize colored people. So, so, so um, just again, uh, for the benefit of those who don't know and for education purposes, because when we were talking about this here in studio last week, many people didn't know what the H word was. Yeah. So, you know, what is the H word? Yeah. Well, it, it is a word that was used um, by the first Dutch settlers when they arrived um, at the Cape uh, of Good Hope. They used this to refer to the natives whom they found when they arrived in South Africa. And it has been used over the years to undermine, to mistreat, and to dehumanize and delegitimize, delegitimize um, colored and, and, and the Khoisan people 
in South Africa. So what is that word? Because the K word, we know what the word is, but uh, people don't seem to know. Let's use this as an yes. opportunity to educate. What is this H word in question? Yes, it's hot not. And <coughs> the, the, the Kimberley High Court has already made a finding on this. Um, the former premier of uh, the Northern Cape, uh, Mrs. Sylvia Lucas, was taken to court for making uh, uh, similar utterances. The court made a finding that the usage of this word amounts to hate speech. It is harmful, hateful, and offensive in all senses. So, um, as I had indicated earlier, we would try and get hold of Freedom Front Plus leader uh, Peter Krunewald. Unfortunately, uh, we understand that he may be on a flight to Cape Town. Uh, but we do have with us now uh, Mr. Voter uh, Vessels uh, speaking on behalf of the Freedom Front Plus. Mr. Vessels, thank you so much for availing yourself this morning. Morning. Thank you for having me. So, um, Mr. Vessels, the Freedom Front Plus has taken issue with the tone and content um, with regard to how the South African Human Rights Commission has reacted and responded to this Eben Etzebeth incident. Uh, do explain to us what your issue is with the human rights' posture. What we are saying is that, uh, firstly, we are of, of opinion that uh, any form of racism is serious and uh, we, we do not tolerate that and there should be action with regards to any form of racism but in this case uh, there's allegations and uh, as far as as we can establish there's there's no uh, the, the investigation has not taken is, is, is not concrete at this uh, at this point what we are saying is that the human rights commission is acting very very far in this case uh, and in other cases, they seem to not act with the same uh, seriousness. Uh, there's a lot of complaints lodged with them, but where they do not act as fast as where they act uh, as, as now they acted now. And uh, that seems to, uh, to be double standards. If he is guilty, then he should uh, face the consequences in this case. But uh, to say that... Uh, there is going to be made an example of him is finding him guilty before uh, before the case has, has gone to court. Mr. Jones? Well, we have taken this matter to court because there's a prima facie case. You, we, you've heard before when the NPA is dealing with a matter, they say there's a prima facie case. And that is why we are, are going to prosecute this matter. There is also a prima facie case in this instance. And that is why we are take, we have taken this matter to the Equality Court. The onus is now on Mr. Yetzebeth to rebut these allegations. The burden of proof has shifted to him to disprove these allegations. And it, it is quite convenient for the FF Plus to uh, come out on this in the very same week where we've decided to take their leader in Limpopo to the uh, Equality Court for making unsavory remarks, for using the K-word. They should be releasing a statement condemning one of their own for making uh, racial remarks. We'll come to that in a moment, but, but they say that you've been premature, you've been biased, and you've applied double standards in this regard because uh, you seem to less arrest on your laurels in most instances, but mm. you're quite quick off the mark on this one. It is not true. We... we Two weeks ago, we, we released a statement that we are going to take Mr. Malema to court for hate speech. Where, where was the FF Plus? We've previously made findings against um, Marius Fransman, Tony Arenreich. Last year, the court ruled in our favor in a matter involving Velapi Kumal, who was calling for the killing of white people. Where, where was the FF Plus? We, we've taken Bongani Masuku, a, a trade unionist, to the constitutional court. The judgment has been reserved uh, for making unsavory remarks against people of Jewish descent. We, uh, when I was still the provincial manager in the Free State, we made a finding against Mr. Steve Nale, a communicator at the Nwate municipality in Paris, for making uh, racist remarks against white people. So, so I don't understand where this comes from. We have been consistent, and the concern of the FF Plus should be why is racism the most reported complaint to the Human Rights Commission? And this has been the case for the last five years. It should concern them. 
and they should be offering solutions on how we can um, uh, deal with this uh, 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 scale of racism in the country. We've seen uh, an increase uh, in the number of uh, race-related uh, cases in the country, and we want uh, parties like uh, FF Plus to join us. Uh, uh, we, we, there's a need for a slant against racism. Mr. Vessels, your response to that and also, you know, uh, whether you believe that, you know, uh, the action uh, or rather the rebuttal that you've offered as the Freedom Front Plus is the correct one with the benefit of hindsight, given what has happened, given the fact that there is now video footage uh, to this particular incident. Do you not believe that as the Freedom Front Plus, you too could have perhaps been more circumspect in how you reacted to the situation? Well, our reaction was that uh, if he's guilty, he must face the consequences. And if there's uh, video footage proving that, then, uh, then that case is, is, should go to court and uh, he should face the consequences. What we had issue with was the words being used to say that this is going to be uh, used to make an example of the exhibit. And that was premature before there was video footage and uh, before the case went to court. Um, we, uh, we do say that uh, the aspect of racism in South Africa must be addressed, and we are very concerned about the polarized society that we have currently. And it's on both sides, and we say that uh, a solution must be seeked. It's very important that we address nation building in South Africa and that we address the fact that there is such polarization and we must get to the source thereof. And uh, that, that we agree with the Human Rights Commission and we do well work with them to find solutions to the polarized society that we currently are facing. Mr. Jones, with regard to uh, this um, statement that the Human Rights Commission will use uh, this incident of Ibn Itzabeth as an example, uh, please explain to us, uh, you know, firstly, whether that was said and secondly, mm. what did you mean by that? You know, there's a tendency or a propensity to rely on headlines without context. I was addressing a community meeting in Langaban, and community members were saying racism is prevalent in this area, uh, uh, colored communities and African communities are mistreated, and there's a need to use this case as an example. And I agreed that we need to use this case to serve as a deterrence because we've seen over the years that racists have become more emboldened and the, uh, and the emboldenment undermines our constitutional aspirations of a non-racial uh, South Africa. And we will continue to take uh, cases to court and make example of people who continue to undermine our constitutional aspirations, who continue to dehumanize uh, other S South Africans and who continue to make all these derogatory remarks. In 1994, in his State of the Nation address, President Mandela said, no more should words like uh, Kuli, Hotnot, Kafor, Roynek uh, should, should be used. He, he was calling for an end to racism. And we've used um, uh, seductive phrases like rainbowism. And, and stuff uh, or, or words like this continue to undermine those efforts to, to unite South Africa. And we need parties, all political formations, to support the work of the Human Rights Commission to deal with this uh, uh, social ill. So um, uh, there's also, I think, uh, what the Freedom Front Plus uh, have pointed out. They, they, they pointed out complaints against BLF uh, in stating, uh, you know, trying to prove the point of mm. how biased you've been as the South African Human Rights Commission. Mr. Vessels, if you'll just elaborate on that before I get Mr. Jones to respond, please. No, I heard the cases that, uh, that he now quoted. You know, from our perspective, we've made a lot of complaints um, against uh, members of, of different communities who made themselves uh, allegedly guilty of, of racist slurs and uh, racism and hate speech. Um, and one of them is the leader of the BLF um, in Potsdam last year, December. And uh, that, that complaint has still not been dealt with with the Human Rights Commission. And uh, we take issue with, with that. 
And uh, there's, there's uh, numerous other examples of where complaints were laid, but uh, where it, it might have not been high profile and the uh, Human Rights Commission did not act as swiftly as, as they act in this type of cases. But I think the, the bottom line is that uh, we, we have a situation here, we have a, we have a problem, and uh, what the Human Rights Commission is also, also saying now is that communities are feeling that there is, um, you know, there, there's racism, but there's other forms of racism as well. There's something wrong in our society, and that must be addressed. The fact that we are polarized must be addressed. And uh, we, must, we must talk more about those issues, not only about the words being used by certain individuals, but also about the sources and the origin and the reason for, these, uh, for this polarization. Mr. Jones? You know, I, I wish uh, my colleague would come on this platform with facts. He, he's misleading the nation. We, earlier this year, we took the BLF to court. In May of this year, the Johannesburg Magistrates Court ruled in our favor. After uh, BLF made hateful comments against white people, the BLF is taking us on appeal in that matter. And we have also filed our papers in the North Houghton High Court against Mr. Andy Lim Kitab. So I don't know where he gets this from. So I it's think b- before case. issuing a statement, you, they, they should verify some of this information with it's the commission. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's the comments he made in, in Porsche's room. We've, we've taken that matter to the, to the Pretoria, I mean, to the North Houghton High Court. So uh, let's uh, come back to Ewan Elizabeth, uh, and, 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 and one of the things you said as the South African Human Rights Commission is that um, you actually want him to return, to come back from the Rugby World Cup. Uh, correct once again, and do you stand by that? No, no, no. That, that is not the position of the commission. Those are the wishes of the community that Mr. Elizabeth should come back to South Africa as they submit his unworthy to represent the country given these uh, serious allegations he's facing, including uh, allegations of criminal conduct. What does the Human Rights Commission believe in this regard? Well, our view is that um, he should uh, 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 face the music. Uh, he, once the court has set down this matter for hearing our case, he should appear in court. And we, have, we are still awaiting a court date from the chief magistrate in Hopefield. Um, Mr. Vessels, what's, what's your view on that, uh, where the community says, actually, given uh, the seriousness of the allegations against Mr. Elizabeth, he, first of all, should not have gone to Japan to begin with uh, to represent uh, South Africa in the Rugby World Cup, and now that he has gone, he should perhaps return. What's the Freedom Front Plus's view on that? Well, someone is, is, uh, is only guilty when found guilty, and uh, he at this stage is not found guilty. So what we are saying is, uh, give him the opportunity to play the tournament, if, and let him come back and face the music in courts. Um, it would be responsible to let him finish the tournament and uh, let him um, participate there because he's not found guilty yet. And that's, that's our stance currently. And and with regard to uh, the compensation issues and people paying money, um, we understand one of the complainants is asking for 350,000, uh, three asking for 300,000 rand, uh, comes to a total of 1.25 million rand uh, of what they are asking collectively. Uh, don't you think that, uh, you know, the use of money um, when it comes to incidents such as these is, is, is fast eroding uh, a sense of justice uh, because you look at the Angelo Agriti case, there was the Adam yeah. Catavelos case, um, Penny Sparrow, uh, and, and it would seem as though, you know, people are quite happy to pay the money and walk away. It, it, it would seem that way, but uh, this is not something we created ourselves as a Human Rights Commission. The Equality Act provides remedies for victims of unfair discrimination, and one of those uh, remedies is monetary compensation. It's in the Act. It's not something that victims um, uh, came up with or we came up with. It's something that the, uh, the, our legislators, our parliamentarians decided on um, as part of ensuring that there are reparative sanctions uh, for victims of unfair discrimination. And just finally, uh, SARU, the South African Rugby Union, uh, they are launching their own investigation into this matter. Uh, Apparently they will have a retired judge preside over it. Do you know anything more about that at this point? 
Yes, I was uh, uh, approached by Saru on Friday when I was still in Cape Town. We told Saru that we cannot participate in that process. They should allow the criminal investigations to continue. They should allow our equality court process to unfold. Then we can talk thereafter. So, uh, voter vessels uh, from the Freedom Front Plus, what's your final word on this uh, whole situation? I think we as a nation um, have a problem and we should have more discussions. We should take racism seriously from all, uh, from all uh, members of all different uh, groups and all different uh, sides of society. And uh, we should come to a point where we realize that we are all South African. We should strive towards equality and uh, we should address the issues uh, and the, the aspect of polarization. And that's important. And uh, these type of cases should not be used to make an example that should be used to address the actual issues and uh, take it on a case-for-case -case basis. And let's not find someone guilty before he's found guilty by a court of law. Wang Jones from Human Rights Commission, your final word? Well, we, we have to work towards uh, the nation building project. A lot of work has been done to promote social cohesion in the country by the Ministry of Arts and Culture. And we also work with communities. We would like to implore all South Africans to work with the co Commission to find lasting solutions. But of course, for, for as long as we don't address the economic exclusion of people, uh, we'll forever have racism. Racism is the only invention that does not have an owner. Well, thank you so much to acting legal head at the South African Human Rights Commission, Buang Jones, and uh, from the Freedom, Fr Freedom Front Plus, a member of parliament there, Voter Vessel, speaking to us. And uh, they were both weighing in on the Eben Etzebeth racial slur saga. Let's take a break.